Welcome to another edition of Ego on Break. It's Jay and Logan's Wrestling Adventures. And uh, I guess today we're going to take a little trip down that road of uh, breaking into the business, so to speak, uh, being taught respect, paying dues, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, how, how, when, and where, and why, that kind of thing. So uh, a lot of this is being brought on just by... Michael Elgin had made a post mm -hmm. and uh, where he was talking about guys breaking in and being taught respect and paying dues and that kind of thing and uh, I think I kind of broke in the same way although I don't know if I was actually broke in that way or if I just took it that way um, so uh, that's what we're going to talk about so sit back relax and uh, I guess enjoy the ride sure awesome so uh, what do you think about the post like you agree, disagree, uh, anything to add to it, take away from it? I agree 100%. Uh, you get some people that, you know, they've been, been doing it for a while and they think that's the end of paying dues. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they, they'll walk in, see people putting up chairs and just kind of go stand around and I'll be talking to nobody and they just stand there and watch you. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of guys and I've been guilty of it myself. I mean, we went to uh, Alabama one time, and I like, you know, it's not my show, so I didn't help. Um, but that that was just, and I don't even know why I didn't help. You know, it's just one of those things where I was kind of in that mood of I've been in the car, you know, for X number of hours, and um, so I mean, I've been guilty of it myself. But there there is a lot of that, you know. I, I'm just a wrestler on this show. I, my job is to wrestle, you know. Oh, that's true. Uh, there's and you see it everywhere it's not just it's not like it's uh, you know specifically just at an ego and event or at a, oh, no, I'm just a ring of honor event or a wwe event you know whatever it's uh you know it's that if you're on that show i, I feel like you know you're just as much responsible for everything as everybody else you know it's it's not just your job to you know to to teach that the ones coming under you but it's to lead by example yeah. you know um well, it's kind of common courtesy too yeah you know, I mean, if I see somebody putting up chairs and I see they got a bunch of chairs, and well, these chairs are going to be filled with people that are going to watch me wrestle tonight. Right. And the quicker they get up, the quicker we're done. So I, instead of me standing here with my finger yep. up in my butt, I can go help. Yep. Um, I agree with that. I mean, I, I, I think there's a lot of. And I think it, it comes from maybe like the world we live in where people are afraid to say something because it may hurt somebody's feelings and all that bullshit. Yeah, you know, I don't give a damn about that shit. <laughs> So, uh, you ever hear the story, you know, don't say it, it might hurt your feelings? I say it anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not right. Yeah, I've been in places where I'm like, yep, we're getting our food spit on because of you, so. Do your damn job the very first time. You know, so, uh. Now I've learned my lesson, I get my food now and then I say something. <laughs> and there's like a picture behind the counter. Probably you. so, yeah. Like, this the asshole. Be sure to spit on this man. guy's food. Special sauce is I have to. <laughs> This shit a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I do agree with a lot of what he said. I think, you know, I don't think guys are broke in exactly right. It's more of a, and I'm, I, I'll am i take guilt. I'll be guilty on this for sure. Um, a lot of my guys that are, are breaking in coming in, I don't treat them like they're, you know, students. I don't treat them like they're employees or whatever. I treat them like, hey, we're, we're cool. We're homies. And, um, uh, so I don't, there's a lot of times I don't want to get in their ass about something, you know. Um, so a lot of times it's just easier to go, oh, well, you know, I'll just do it. Or it, one of those, it could be even one of those things where I may not even pay attention that they're not doing something, yeah. you know, because I'm doing shit. Because uh, like it or not, there's a lot of running around that a, a promoter does that shows um, like just being man, pulled in 10 off. different directions, you know. That last year, um, me and you ran around so damn much when it's funny, yeah. getting chairs and yeah. food and everything else. So, uh, it's definitely a, a lot goes on. and um, A lot of people will be like, I got to come in and shake hands, but if I'm busy, I'll get you shake hand right. later because I didn't shake John Davis' hand for about 30, 40 minutes, not an hour. And I would finally walk over and say, I said, I'm sorry to come shake hand. I just didn't, you know, I've been busy. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Um... I don't know, like, 
I mean, it's just to me, I mean, if you're at a show, if you're booked, or if you're just there with somebody, that might yeah. be a way to get on the show if you offer to help put up. I was going to say, like, and I'm a believer in this, and uh, the first person I saw actually bring it to light was George South, and then Michael Elgin even yeah. said it too. You know, if there's a spot open on the show, and I've got two choices, the guy that showed up who may be le less experienced and is working his butt off helping do stuff without being asked, yeah. and I've got this more experienced guy who's watching, um, chances are I'm going to book that guy that, you know, that's working his butt off, whether he's got the experience or not. And uh, I think that goes to a lot, you know. Is uh, That's true. And I know, like, a lot of times we set up and it's not that big of a deal. No. You know, but where I tend to, like, this would help me more is when it's time to take down, you know, because yeah. I can get there, you know, if the show's at 8 o'clock, I can get there at 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, you think who Dean showed up? How fast some damn wrestlers run out of a damn wrestling show? Yeah, party. so uh, she snap. So I'm more of a if you want to be brought back kind of thing. You yeah. know, uh, stay after and help. You know, yeah. uh, because I'm trying to pay people. I'm trying to deal with the building and you know whatever this ever making sure things are done. There's a you know stacking chairs could take ten minutes and Dude, me and you didn't leave that building almost twelve o'clock. We left a good hour after everybody else left. Yeah. Uh, and they they. I went to the locker room. The garbage was bagged, things like that. But you know, the locker room still had to be swept, swept out. The floor, the floor had to be swept that. up. There's, you know, there's a little trash in the in the bleachers and stuff like that. Yeah. Like all that, we had to make sure was done before we could get out. Now, I did not have to put a finger on the ring, so True. that much I'm ecstatic. I didn't have yeah. to clean the locker room. Yeah. I just had to clean the piles up that was left. But you like know? me and your mama did the chairs. Yeah. So. You know. All right. Uh. I want to talk about one other thing. Yeah, let's too. add to this because I'm running out of stuff to uh, say. <laughs> well, no, it's something that some people keep using the word like it's a derogatory thing, and it's not. But to call somebody a jobber as if it's a cuss word. Yeah. And I posted on Facebook, all wrestlers are jobbers. Yeah. Unless you're undefeated, you've done a job, <laughs> and you are a jobber. Yeah, I don't think. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I, I get why the word's there. But to but, use it in derogatory yeah, terms. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you can thank The Rock for that, you know. No, he called him Jabroni. Same difference. No, still, yeah. Um, That's what everybody's trying to be cool like The Rock, you know. Well, he's making millions, you're on Facebook typing. <laughs> you know, there's a difference. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just like jerking the curtain, you know. And you have guys go, oh, I'm not working, you know. Jerking the curtain's not necessarily, you know. You give me the first match yeah. every night of the week. I, I'd rather be the first match. First or second, I mean, I'm uh, happy with it. I like to get in there early, and that way you hadn't seen all the good wrestlers. <laughs> Let me go in, do my thing, and you're excited. If you've watched everybody else do their stuff, and then you see me, you're like, nah, he's not that good. So, yeah, I'd rather be first. But yeah, that's. I just don't like what, what, What's your opinion on Mark? Mark can be used, it can be a derogatory term, in my opinion. Because you can act like a dumb Mark. Yeah. And as far as the word being smart, Mark, to me, that's about the most dumb yeah. thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, you, you, you may not be the dumb, Mark, but you still, I mean, there, there's smart. still stuff that you don't know, you don't see, just because you can read stuff, you know, yeah. on the internet and that kind of thing. Um, you know, if you're a computer booker. Yeah. You know, this, I heard a guy say. Uh, and star it, rating system and you've never yeah. done a match in your life. Well, this was funny. The guy said, uh. Yeah, my son doesn't consider himself a fan. He calls himself a smart mark. Mm -hmm. But you could ask that smart mark, hey, do you know who Sammy Callahan is? And he'll go, oh, no, I've never heard of that guy. Mm -hmm. Like, he he only knows, he thinks he's a smart mark because he watches WWE and reads stuff on the Internet about WWE. You know, oh, I saw Braun Strowman and, you know, Roman Reigns at Disneyland. I'm smart, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, realize wrestlers are people, you know. Um say how you can bring this up. I don't want it to be derogatory, but you, I mean, think about it this way. When we were, uh, you just had to show Michael Elgin and John Davis. Yes. Who was more known there? John. Okay. But a lot of the wrestlers in the back, minds were blown with the people in the audience did not know who Michael yep. Elgin were. Yep. Um, and it's because, you know, I'd say 60% of that crowd was either A, uh, WWE. Or casual. Uh, or casual. Yeah. And out of the out of that forty percent, 
that knew, you know, that was wrestling fans or ego fans, um, they were familiar with John, yeah. you know. Um, so they like they they got the importance of who Michael Elgin yeah, was. They got it at the end. But they probably couldn't have told you three matches no. he had been in. No, you know. Exactly. Now, could these fans told you three matches John Davis had been in outside of Ego? Probably not. I doubt it very You know. Like, yeah. But they knew who John Davis was yeah. because he had been here before. It's um, just, but it was all, like the same thing. You know, who was who was more famous, the Boot Boys or Michael Elgin? You know, in the real world. Michael Elgin's the more famous guy. Yeah, exactly. At an ego event where they either know WWE, a little bit of stuff they read on the internet, and pro wrestling ego, <laughs> the Boot Boys would be the more famous guys. True. So, um, uh, like I said, I didn't want to be derogatory. Just, yeah. I wanted to be that people to understand that we don't get wrestling yeah. like that down here. Right. Man. We don't. Right. Mississippi is one of the worst states for indie wrestling to be yeah. named. Yeah. And I mean, the closest well, we get is Tennessee, really. They won't. They get the old WCW names or WWF names. Yeah. Half of them don't have a clue in hell who Ring of Honor is, and they couldn't tell you yep. about Japanese wrestling right. if you paid them. I've got a friend who uh, I try to keep educated, but he's one of these, oh, if it ain't on WWE, you know, if it ain't on TV, oh, it ain't happening. Oh, I mind um, <laughs> But I can remember when Daniel Bryan first came on TV. Yeah. He was like, man, you should see this guy, Daniel Bryan. I was like, man, I tried to get you to watch him 10 years ago. Oh, well, that part didn't count. You know, like, Daniel Bryan wasn't a good wrestler to him. Until he was on WWE. Yeah, the old wrestling was right behind his house and he wouldn't come up the road. So, uh. That's true. And he watches every WWE product that comes on television. But I was kind of wanting the, the wrestlers over at the show to understand, like, why they didn't yeah. get why right. Michael Elgin was a big deal. Well, as a promoter, and I do this, I've, as a guy that puts together the matches and the cards and things like that, I tend to. I tend to like, uh, I'm like, oh, you know, this guy, man, people know who this guy is. But they don't, man. And, and the internet does know who he is. Yeah. But right. the percentage of fans in Mississippi that know, that are on the internet searching wrestling is is probably like 1%, you know. Um, it's pretty low. Right. And that's the reason, you know, I could bring in a, uh, you know, I could bring in Chris Hero versus Ricochet. And they went out clean hell who Right. Uh, um, but now I could bring in, and I'm just going to try Brian, to be. Uh, Brian Christopher and Buff Bagwell, and they packed us. There you go. There you go. I'm just, because uh, that's two they use around here a <laughs> yeah. lot. And I've seen them pack the house. Yeah. Like, legit. Yeah. So. And, you know, and even in this part of our state, um, a guy like Brian Christopher is not a name. You know, because. If you hadn't been on TV lately, then yeah. you're not a name anymore. You but know what I mean? He was so big up in like Memphis, yeah. so it still kind of carries over. Because I know, like, um, you know, we've used, I've used Hyde and Reich, I've used Rodney Mack, and those kind of guys, mm -hmm. and they were on See TV, yeah. you know, but they were not the guys on TV. Does no. that make sense? Yeah, I know. I know so uh, where so. I mean, and even even jazz, like, and when we had jazz, yeah, a lot of people it. didn't realize who she was. <laughs> they thought she was Booker T's all Yeah, day. but that was because <laughs> Booker T was on TV. That you know, Charmel uh, was just on TV or was still on TV. So people, go, oh, she's from WWE. Is that Charmel? Because Charmel was the black girl on TV. You yeah. know, so it doesn't matter that you know three years before that jazz was at WrestleMania. Exactly. You know, um, it was the fact. Well, you're not on TV now. I don't remember you, and that just goes to that. We want it right now, and if it hadn't happened today, then, like, here in Mississippi, we're dealing with the uh, death of a, a kid, yeah. you know. Um, Not next week, they won't remember. Exactly. That's what I was getting at. You yeah. know, if it doesn't happen today, then we don't remember it. Yeah. So, it's just that instant gratification, instant, like, I've got all this information in my hand, and so much stuff happens in the world that I can't reflect well or even you know remember what happened yesterday yeah, there's a lot so, of it like that well, like i'll say this for the biggest name you've ever used that drew the biggest number of people was jake roberts and it was wouldn't you agree right and it was an absolutely garbage match yes. and he was a complete prick but i mean you drew a buttload of people off of it yeah that's what i'm saying that kind of indie name is still big i mean because everybody knows who the hell right. snake roberts is I mean, that's going to pack a house. That, that 1980s, yeah. like, we're going to be competing uh, against Nikolai Volkov in June. <laughs> we got an event in June, and uh, in the same town, Nikolai Volkov is going to be at Comic-Con. Really? I guarantee you, there's going to be tons of people to go out to see Nikolai Volkov 
who won't come to an ego show. Possible, yeah. Because ego's not on TV. Ego's, you know, oh, that's just that old, that you know, at amateur, I would say, minor leagues yeah, or whatever. They just play. Right, yeah, they just out there playing. And, you know, Nikolai, he was on TV, you know. He was, you know, I remember singing the National Anthem. I hated him, but I, you know, I love him now, and he's 100. Yeah. You know, it's not a knock on Nikolai. Go make your money. I don't know. Um, because I have sent word, hey, <laughs> you know, it, when you get down there, if you want to swing by and see some wrestling fans, then come on over. Sign you know, some autographs, make some more. Yeah. Money. So I mean, I have reached out to him. Um, which it was hard to track him down. It took me like a week, but uh, I, so I'm not hating. <laughs> so he can come on over for his ego. But uh, it's just that fact that. You're going to have those fans that go, oh, I remember him from TV when I was a kid, but they won't come and, you know. But I just want people to kind of understand, you know, how the fans here think. I mean, that's legit it. And we just don't get a lot of wrestling in Mississippi no. that draws them kind of right. names. Right. As a matter of fact, beyond you, I, could you tell me another Ring of Honor type guy that's been in this area? I honestly can't. Well, I, I will say this, uh, Shane Douglas up with the Elite. Yeah, down at the coast. Yeah. And then when Power Slam was running, they used, you know, something like they'd have Stevie Richards, they'd have Rosie. Yeah, I guess uh, so. I mean, they had Viscera, but now but they didn't. still WWE now. Right, I'm talking yeah. about like Ring of Honor or PWG or Well, I mean, Japan. Shane Douglas in a Ring of Honor. Or well, I use him as like ECW. I, I never really think about him in WCW or WWE. And I yeah. know he did stuff there, but... He was still known as the ECW right. champion, right? Me. Well, and it was all because I, you know, the, the throw down the belt part. That's what, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, that's the lasting memory of people have of Shane Douglas. Exactly. Um, and he's another one. I ain't gonna say he'd pack a house, but he's gonna pull some people. Yeah. But I think, you know, like we try to look for our niche and, you know, I think our niche is maybe try to bring in guys like Elgin in it, you know, like I the like indie name guys. I think Elgin would pull good now that people have seen right. him and they're like, oh, okay, now nah, I can't. Yeah, but they wouldn't come because, oh, I saw him in, I, I watched his match on TV where he wrestled, you know, oh, Omega oh, in oh, Japan. Oh. It's like, no, I remember he wrestled John Davis. But I bet some people that were at the show now went home, checked him out online, right. and they're like, you know, it's a bad song, you know? Right. So. so, yeah, it's just, uh, man, this conversation's been a little bit everywhere, but. Well, it's just, uh, I, like I said, I really wanted people to kind of understand the fans down here because we are a different bunch. I mean, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's a different breed. Most, most fans that are fans of independent wrestling in Mississippi work in the independents in Mississippi. That's Does it. that make sense? Yeah. Um, they're not, or at least they have some, like, I give a shout to my, my buddies at the House Show podcast. You know, those are wrestling fans. They know about the independents. They've watched Japan, Ring of Honor, and all that stuff. Um, but they're in the wrestling business because they kind of have that podcast. You know, exactly. um, do they come and support us? Absolutely. And that's the reason we support them and throw their stuff out there. Uh, and we're even trying to work on getting a, a ego, you know, podcast through them where they talk about pro wrestling ego. And. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, but at the same time, for every, you know, one guy, there's a thousand that go, oh, they're not on TV. Well, I mean, that's true. I mean, YouTube's only so powerful, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many times I share videos, but if somebody don't hit play, Mm -hmm. there ain't no damn thing I can do. Yep. You know, so. And, you know, most people, when they do have free time, you know they're playing Candy Crush or whatever. They're not. I'm just saying they're not going. Oh, let me go watch some wrestling from yeah. Texas or you know, I mean, wrestling honestly, in Mississippi. You know, I haven't turned the radio on in my car in probably three months now. I'll, I'll put my cell phone here and listen to mm-hmm. YouTube or a podcast or something while driving yeah. down the road. Yep. That's so just me, though. You know. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. But we are, you know, wrestling fans. <laughs> you know, not WWE fans. We're wrestling fans. So. And we are both in the wrestling business in Mississippi. Right. So we're not buying tickets, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I bought a few. <laughs> I bought a few. I'm probably going to buy one to the WWF show. Oh, I'm talking about to, to an ego to show. An I ego bought a bunch show. of them yeah, yeah, just to break them, even, man. you know. So have I. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but it is what it is. So, uh, day shout outs, anything to just well, close it up I, with? I, I do want to say my laptop has been down for about a week now. So that's why there ain't no uh, life in the headlocks up. 
Uh, as soon as it gets up, I'll get some up. Awesome. All right, so you did get some new ones, right? I got some new ones. I just can't put them up. Awesome. So, uh, May 27th, we were shooting for two big events, one in Hasburg, one in Jackson. The Hasburg event has been canceled, unfortunately. Um, to, to a wedding. Yeah, to a wedding or an anniversary or something, but... Uh, Might be another kind of fight break out of wedding. <laughs> it could you be. Never know. But we still have the May 27th event in Canton. That's a free event, so no real excuses not to make it. And uh, it's going to be headlined by Eric Wayne versus Ray Fury. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's a first-time matchup, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have June the 24th. We're back at the Hideaway where Joey Abel is uh, going to get his rematch against John Davis. And I guess technically it's a rematch, but a first-time matchup first time as well. Singles, yeah, um, so pretty excited about that. So... Uh, June 24th, Hideaway, May 27th, Saw Park in Canton. Uh, check those out, Life in a Headlock. Um, I guess 10 Questions of Doom are dead because I haven't needed any in a while. So uh, maybe maybe that can come off a hiatus down the road. So <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I can only do some So uh, yeah, I just got busy. Oh, um, oh, we got two more. Uh, Yazoo City, Friday, my May 26th. We'll be at Yazoo City at the park, part of... Yazoo City Homecoming. Oh, um, we'll be there, we'll and then, huh? Canton. Yep. So it'll be a, it'll be a double shot. Friday in Yazoo City, and then Saturday in Canton. Uh, both events are free. Brands both events are lotion. outside. So uh, suntan lotion and chairs are recommended. Yeah. Um, and then June second, Friday, June second, we are again teaming up with. Uh, Heart of David Ministries, which is ran by Ted DiBiase Sr., mm -hmm. and Ignite Sports Camp, which is uh, headed up by Ted DiBiase Jr., mm -hmm. and we're going to be in Vossburg, Mississippi, which is uh, nice down toward the Laurel okay. area at, and I may say this wrong, but Wawaka Springs Christian Camp, and uh, we're going to be doing the sports camp again this year. So uh, check that out. So that Vossburg is a new town for us. We haven't been there. Um, so I'm pretty excited year, about that. You got a uh, little boy at cancer, right? Yes, last John year. John Cena sent a message. Yep. Last year we did the, the event. We had Josh Sexton there as honorary guest. Yeah. And uh, WWE Network was there filming a story on Ted Jr. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to be a part of that. We got on the network. <laughs> And uh, John Cena sent a video just telling Josh, hey, keep on fighting. You know, it's because of, you know, fans like you are the reason I do what I do. So it was very cool to, uh, you know, not only be on the network, to be able to be there at that camp because that was really cool. Um, to be able to work with the DBICs again was very cool. But to kind of have John Cena on your show was pretty awesome as well. So, uh, it hey, it counts when they're via WWE satellite on show. WWE. So, via satellite to uh, Florence, Mississippi. There you go. Um, so, I guess, I guess we could say we're one of the only. Hey, you want to be come be fans of pro wrestling ego because you may get to see a video of John Cena on our show. So, <laughs> might pop up in the WWE yeah. universe. And, for yeah, that. hey, just check it out. It is on YouTube. Um, it is on the network. Um, it's on W.com and it's everywhere. So uh, it's just where are they now, Ted DiBiase Jr. Or what happened to Ted DiBiase Jr. or something like that. And uh, it should pop right up. Later, guys.